Hello, everybody. Help, uh, welcome to this live stream. It's uh, there we are now. It's Thursday. I don't. I, I've been playing around with doing live streams at, at different times of the week just to um, see what would flow better. Um, I used to do them quite regularly on a Wednesday evening at eight o'clock, and I'm just switching it up a bit. So uh, it's great to be here with you this lunchtime on Thursday and um, so what I wanted to share with you today is um, some of some of you might be brilliant at manifesting but find that this isn't sustainable for some reason that it, you go down through these ups and downs where you know sometimes it can be high Sonia it can be like really really flowing but then it just sort of bottoms out and you don't know what's gone wrong and a reason for this could be that it's um, like the unhealed parts of ourselves that don't feel worthy of having our desires fulfilled and um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about this <clears throat> so <laughs> over the last 12 months or so I've been going through quite a deep unraveling process um, and recently particularly recently since we um kind of moved into 2018 the energies were very different things have been gathering momentum and i'm getting so many ahas about how i'd been holding myself back um and i'm revisiting all that old deep shit you know the the stuff we say to to ourselves i thought i'd dealt with all of this years ago i'm sure you know what i'm saying um so I hope kind of by what I'm sharing uh, with from my experiences, it's going to help maybe resonate with you and open up much greater possibilities for you too. So, and if you've, um, hi Inga, if you've got any questions or, you know, if this does resonate or you've got things that uh, you've experienced similar, let me know in the comments because I know this happens for so many people, particularly uh, people in my community, you know, empaths, healers, therapists, coaches, uh, people who are really sensitive. There's often a really, uh, you know, thing that we share, often things that happened in our past that, you know, made us, that were painful because we could, we were so sensitive to them that part of us split off. And, um, and so that's kind of what I want to explore a little bit more about today. So uh, as I've, when I do live streams, I, in order to sort of, I get an idea, it comes as a download usually in the morning. Uh, but to fully land it, I usually need to write it out. And then I can, you know, repurpose it as a, a blog or something that's written. But it helps me ground it. And as I was writing uh, what I wanted to share with, through this today, I could really feel the resistance. There was, I found so many distractions. Uh, you know, Facebook, I was on that far too much. I was on iPlayer. I even got busy in the kitchen baking, which is <laughs> so un unlike me. Uh, but it seemed so urgent. <laughs> so my, you know, my heart was pounding. I've been procrastinating over the words and, um, you know, what to, how to bring it all together when it, everything was so clear in the morning. So I'm definitely at my edge. And uh, maybe as I kind of go through this, you might meet yours as I share mine. So, so in my in my live stream last week, I talked a bit about what can happen when we abandon ourselves at a young age, and it's that thing that we do to um, is we do it to ourselves unconsciously when we don't fit in, when we're maybe consistently bullied or rejected or ostracized and so we believe we must be flawed or inferior or not worthy of love essentially and we tell ourselves well they must be right about me it must be true because they all seem to agree <laughs> oh Inga you usually tidy up the house as a form of procrastination and distraction yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so I don't have the tidy tidying thing <laughs> that would be a good one for me <laughs> so um, when children make themselves inherently wrong like this it really kills their self-worth their self-respect and their self-confidence and it may even lead them to conclude that their very existence is not welcome because it's reinforced so often by their experience by people telling them you know we don't want you or you know you're not welcome 
and this was my story and looking back from what I know now I would also say that I'd been depressed as a kid. You know, I tried to tell my parents about it, but they didn't take it seriously. Or they probably thought I was just going through that typical childhood stuff, not fitting in or, you know, I don't know what was in their heads. But, um, but they, they didn't get it. They, they couldn't see what was really happening. But for me, it was so real. And I remember planning my exit from this world many times because I, I couldn't see the point of me. And it hurt so much. I just thought I was so flawed and worthless. Uh, however, I, I could see that my parents would be completely devastated if I left like that. So I buried all my feelings so that I didn't have to kind of feel the pain of this awful truth about me. And that beautiful, authentic self got banished because I deemed it so shameful and contemptible. And over time that hole that remained it kind of got filled with a fabricated version of myself that was constructed to be more acceptable to fit in to be liked by others you know how that goes and um you know that survival strategy it got me through school but it was a real cost so you know in, from my late teens through, through my early 20s or even to late 20s and, and you know even this creeps in now sometimes you know I, I, didn't, I didn't know who I really was or what I believed or thought I didn't know my own opinion I, I didn't trust myself or my feelings uh, but I was hyper vigilant hyper vigilant I was quite paranoid and I was really really sensitive uh, I, I was terrified that those awful parts uh of me that i was trying to keep hidden that they would be exposed you know so i it was like i hid in plain sight by pulling my energy in hiding my light wishing i was invisible and i still really wanted to belong but i was really anxious about being rejected again so i'd hang around the periphery of social groups so that i could um you know leave before i was pushed out and um, i used to feel really vulnerable and uncomfortable in large groups uh, so to fit in socially I relied on alcohol to, to feel less inhibited and to connect temporarily and as, as I kind of share some of these let me know what your some of maybe some of what your coping mechanisms were if you had any of this at all that um, you know as, as you were younger maybe maybe you didn't <laughs> um, I, I hope that you didn't in fact but um, you know for many of us when we don't feel when when our self worth is uh, affected, the, some of these are the things that uh, we used to go through. Um, I didn't know what I really wanted because I didn't know the real I. I and I, you know, I'd be really easily swayed by what others wanted and fit in with whoever had the strongest energy or the strongest desire. Uh, and then by f going with them, by following them, I wouldn't know how I'd come to arrive so far away from what felt good to me uh, and it was really confusing I used to find myself in in all kinds of experiences where I wasn't respecting myself and I let others disrespect me too and I was always seeking to fill that hole um, that hole inside me the, the one that had been left by this part that I'd you know abandoned by connecting with other people looking for love outside myself my boundaries were wide open and so relationships were really confusing and uh, I would really lose my centre quite easily. And when challenges arose, I never really knew what was my part and what was someone else's. And so I usually just blamed myself because they had obviously uncovered this awful truth about me. So, uh, you know, as a young person, I was pretty messed up, particularly in my teenage years. and. Um, I spoke to a friend of mine last week because I, I know I shared a little bit about this on my live stream last week and she said she never knew this about me and I was, I was quite surprised about that because I've been on this journey to transform this story now for over 30 years and I'm really open about it uh, and I, I don't withhold things because I'm not certainly not ashamed of who I am now and I know that when we confront our own dark places and we shine that light of consciousness into them that they're transformed and by sharing our awareness it really helps others 
it, it's really just not come up in such a strong way to be relevant uh, when I've been sharing uh, things that have been going on for me, like in blogs or, or doing videos. And I really, really don't like that contrived vulnerability marketing where coaches urge you to, to share your past pain because it pulls clients in. <laughs> so why am I telling you all of this? Um, well, it's like the, the deepest hurts are the ones that we keep hidden from ourselves, which means we're not aware of them, but they carry on influencing our lives and, and our choices nonetheless. Uh, when we have those challenging and painful starts to our lives, uh, and to survive, we sort of banish that part of us that we can't accept. If we don't retrieve that part back into the wholeness of who we are and we acknowledge it's right to be there, it will have a real direct impact on how worthy of our desires we believe we are. When you don't fully believe that you have the right to have your desires fulfilled, no amount of focus or positive thinking will be able to create a sustained level of success in your life. But when you call back in and you heal those lost parts, then you become your complete self. It's like you've made, you make space for all parts of yourself. Every part of you worthy of receiving the abundance you desire. Does that make sense? So how do you retrieve these parts of you that you might have abandoned when they're out of conscious awareness? So I do do pop any questions in oh thanks for the heart Inga. pop any questions in or comments i'd love to hear how what your experience has been too um for me how i started pulling these parts back has been through embracing my gifts and following my fear um despite my story i came into this life with a soul mission like we all do i came in with powerful healing gifts great intuition and an ability to see the truth in people or the truth in situations. Uh, although my family have no interest in spirituality and they've got very fixed ideas about how things are, um, nobody recognised any of this in me to encourage it. So, um, and also it's probably my quite intense energy that caused people to sort of push me away in the first place. Uh, that, that ability... Uh, to see into people, you know, make, it makes people uncomfortable when someone can see them. You know, they don't, they've got a mask in place. They don't want to be, they don't want people seeing them. So uh, I think it, you know, I made people uncomfortable. So it's much easier to not have me there. So apart from always having the role of agony aunt, I didn't really have much awareness of my gifts when I was much younger. But when I was traveling around Japan and India and South America in, in my 20s, I'd frequently have holy men and like priests and sadhus and shamans come up to me and like, quite reverentially pronounce me very pure. People would even ask me to bless them. Uh, and it really freaked me out at the time because I didn't understand what they, they saw in me. Um, so now, after many years of exploring and healing and learning and radically following my intuition and pushing my boundaries through personal and spiritual development and spiritual practice and especially from facilitating and coaching and teaching about energy and consciousness i can really own this gift or really accept this gift it's what i do best it's and i i love the life-changing transformation that it makes possible for people but I, even with all of this, I'm still aware of that deeply hidden, shameful part of me that, uh, that, that I thought was really contemptible and flawed and not worthy of existing. Because it, I've noticed over the, sort of, you know, the last few years how it comes up to covertly influence me. Because, and it shows up when, uh, whenever I step up another level to face another big visibility fear. You know, it does everything it can to fill my head with reasons not to move forward and I feel all of that old energy from those unhappy times kind of filling my body, uh, filling my energy field. Does, does that sound familiar to you when, when you've gone for a big um, step up or you're, uh, maybe you do, uh, I know that some of you here do Facebook Lives um, 
every time you step in front of the camera and you're doing something live in front of people, for me, it still stirs up all of that stuff. It's just about moving through that. Um, it brings up like the uh, the it brings up the possibility of transformation because you're in your stuff so if you can uh, allow that energy to release then it, it gets freed from your system um each big leap that i've taken has brought another layer of lies to the surface and each time it, i've done that it sort of reconnected me with part of myself that i hadn't loved and that i'd rejected so you can see how following your fears and really jumping into it can help you reconnect with those lost parts of yourself and consciously acknowledging them so that they feel seen and heard and loved as they are is the key to in reintegrating them. Now, a few months ago, I was, um, I was doing a process in a workshop uh, where I, I deeply reconnected to part of me that I had no idea was missing. And she was able to drop in it was like connecting to myself and she was able to drop in because through all the inner work that i'd done i'd been uh i'd been consciously claiming my space and my right to to be here to my right to exist because i'd i'd discovered that that uh that limitation about or that belief i should say that uh i i don't have i don't have the right to exist this was like some old story that's like playing in the background and like consciously of course I have a right to exist but that was the old story from from way back and so to counter that I'd been playing with this queen archetype and I have a picture of her and she looks like this tree that's like kind of oh she's sitting in a throne that's kind of it's a tree and she's almost like rooted into the ground <clears throat> excuse me and uh but she's standing there really regally and the energy of her is uh i practice kind of like embodying that and feeling it and then like it's like owning your sovereign power and the more i look at it it puts me into that space and because i'm i'm convinced that this is that like really contributed to this sense of making space for me to bring myself back to bring all parts of me back and that i have the right to, to exist and um so this part of me dropped in because i'd made that space for her to be there otherwise you know it, there never had been that space and uh now she's back with me all the time and i i don't feel the void i don't feel anything missing i didn't know there was a void but now she's back i could tell that there was if that makes sense and, and having that land has really helped me properly to own my power and to be able to communicate it. And uh, along with kind of working with that queen archetype, it's really helped me to get a sense of myself and, um, and the words to, to explain it. So I know that I, I am an illuminator of truth. I channel high vibrational energy that transmutes denser energies within myself and others and i'm really highly attuned to finding the truth and exposing the lies that keep us small i know that my mission is to inspire people to really rise above their current abundance blocks where i can hold them in a higher vibration that will speed up that process and, and make it easier and I know that I'm here to safely guide and support people while they travel into their inner darkness. Because that's where, that's where the gold is. And it helps free them from that lack and limitation so that they can come to know at a much deeper level how to use their own spiritual power. And kind of to know that and to land it, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> I can't tell you how good that feels. You know, it's like claiming it, it just feels like it's, it's made such a shift in, in my energy. So, oh, thank you, Inga. She says she loves my clarity. Thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned last week, since this integrated, abundance has been flowing like never before. It, it still feels pretty miraculous after so many years that felt like struggle or of making do or of just working really hard to achieve something. And, uh, but right now, uh, I can put a question out to the universe about maybe how to achieve something or to ask the truth about something and an answer or a way to find an answer appears virtually immediately. It's been incredible. 
and you know like all kinds of different things have been showing up that just makes me feel utterly supported that I'm completely kind of in flow with with this greater intelligence that that is running the universe you know it's part of it, it I'm connected with it I have that intelligence at my fingertips and uh yeah finally it makes me feel really integrated and part of this fluid flow <laughs> so uh it's what i believed is always possible and you know more and more than what i believed is possible has, is showing up and i know that everyone has access to this and it's so exciting so and as you know i know that everybody in my com community shares very similar stories of um uh, a, a challenge and adversity and overcoming it and being sensitive like I was saying right at the beginning of wanting to belong wanting to fit in but of having high sensitivities and of having amazing spiritual gifts and but that the abundance that you desire still isn't showing up like you know is possible so if you can recognize that and you can recognize where you've been listening to your own excuses and limitations and you really are ready to stop that and do what's necessary to transcend that story to commit to yourself and to living the abundant life that you know you're meant for then maybe i can help you if you would like my help book in for a complimentary possibility call with me and we can talk about what your desires are and how you might reach them by working together so I will put a link in the description box where you can just book through straight to my online calendar. And uh, but let's have a chat. Let's see uh, what's possible for you. It would be up my absolute honour. So if you have any other questions about what I've been talking about or anything that you want to share or you want to message me privately, you know, drop me an email at kathy at kathyballard.com and um, I'll certainly answer. And um, other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.